Hi there, in today's tutorial I will show you step by step on how to import height maps and use them to create realistic terrain in Magic of Oxal. Hopefully by the end of the video you will have a better understanding of how to efficiently create high resolution terrain. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm using Magic of Oxal version 0.99.6.2 and World Painter version 2.8.1. Another thing I wanted to mention is that Magic of Oxal can only import height maps with a size of 256 cubed. This means that if you're looking to do even larger projects than this, you'll need to split the height map into smaller sections. For example, if you want a render that is roughly 1000 voxels cubed, you would need to make 4 sections out of the height map. Now that we've gotten that all out of the way, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you need to do is install World Painter. World Painter is a powerful tool that will help you create height maps that we will use later in Magic of Oxal. Depending on which operating system you have on your computer, download the correct one. For me, I have 64 Windows operating system, so I will choose that one. Once it's done downloading, go ahead and open up the exe file and wait for it to prepare the install. Once that's finished, allow it to make changes to your device and start the World Painter installation process. I already have World Painter installed, so it's asking me if I want to update the current one I have. Click Next and read the copyright information, then click Next again. Make sure you have that box marked as this is how World Painter will save its world maps. Click Next and wait for it to install. Finally, click Finish and open up World Painter. Now that we're in World Painter, switch to Raise slash Lower Terrain tool and start shaping the landscape in a way that you're satisfied. Since my theme is Bone Pit, I start off by shaping the sides of the pit until I'm happy with how it looks. Later, you'll see me add spikes inside of the pit, which I will recolor in Magic of Oxal to look like bones. I'm not going to do an in-depth tutorial on World Painter, however I might make a video on it depending on what you guys think. I then smooth out the roughness of the pit to give it a more natural look. Now that I'm satisfied with the general shape of the pit, I move on to the edges, giving it a lip to further project the atmosphere of the creation. Now you can see me adding in the spikes that I was referring to earlier. These will later be recolored in Magic of Oxal and turned into bones. Right here you can see me go to View, Show 3D View. This generates a 3D model for us to pan around and get a better look at how things will turn out. I use this to adjust anything I see fit. Lastly, I add any final touches to the World Painter and get rid of any sand slash stone I see using the Pencil Tool plus Grass Block in the menus before I export. Now that I'm happy with what I've created, I go to File, Export, Export as Height Map. Then I save it to a place where I can find it later. Before we're ready to import our height map, we need to get rid of any transparency. To do this, open up Microsoft Paint and save the file as PNG. This will remove any transparency, finalizing our file for importation. Now that we're ready to import our height map, open up Magic of Voxel and go to World View by pressing Tab on your keyboard. Delete the default cube and then switch to Palette 2. It's important that you do this before you drag the height map into Magic of Voxel. If you don't do this, it will not work. You can see here that I did not switch to Palette 2 and things started to get messy. In case you do this by accident, delete the height map from World View, switch to Palette 2, and try again. Now that we're ready for the next step, go back to Model View and set the size of the model to 256 cubed. After you've done this, type XS space height into the command console. This essentially assigns a certain height for every color and adds that many voxels on top of it. From here you can recolor the model by selecting the color you want and using the paint bucket tool. This will effectively set the base color of the model to one of your liking. Some very simple yet effective techniques I use to recolor the model are firstly using the voxel brush with a size of roughly 3 to 8 voxel diameter. I then switch to paint mode and begin recoloring the model. You can also see me use a gradient in my palette. I do this by holding Ctrl and Alt at the same time and dragging one color onto another. This will create a perfect blend between the two colors. I use this method to give the rocks and sand some texture. Here you can see me readjusting the palette colors to my liking. I'm also giving each layer its own color to simulate depth within the pit. Now that the dunes look the way that I want them, I start defining the palette for the surrounding rock face. Once again, I do this by holding Ctrl and Alt at the same time, then drag one color onto another and any colors in between will automatically be included in the gradient. Once I have my palette, I will move on to coloring the rock face. I start with the darkest shade and will gradually move up layer by layer and color by color until I reach the top of the rocks. Some important things to note while painting the rocks is don't worry about making everything look flat and even. Nature is organic and irregular. By having messy lines, it makes things look more natural and flowy. 
You can also see that I follow the rough shape of the rocks. On parts that end much higher, I make bigger strokes. This is to give the rocks a more natural look, almost as if a great lake used to flow here. Once I'm happy with how the pit looks, I begin working on the exterior of the model. I start by making everything the lightest color and then gradually work the darker colors outward. By doing this, it gives the sand a more natural look. It also gives the eyes a place to rest and look at. Finally, I begin working on the bones. I decided that they would look best if I kept them just white. I could go back in and texture the bones as well, but I run the risk of it becoming too busy and overcrowded. An important part of a good render is having a flow. If things become too much, it's hard to look at. So to avoid this, I leave some things untextured. Finally, once I'm satisfied with how things look, I make any final touches and now it's done. Thank you guys so much for watching my tutorial. If you made it this far, please leave a like and don't forget to comment on what other tutorials you would like to see on my channel. Stay on the lookout for my upcoming video. It's going to cover advanced techniques for models larger than 256 cubed. Once again, thank you so much and have a great day.